we got to know that we cannot be casual about our prayer life and yet expect to live a successful and a victorious life. Again, prayer is not just for begging. Prayer is to connect with God. What prayer does, <clears throat> it aligns your spirit man with the Holy Spirit. So his presence, his wisdom, his plans and purposes for our lives can be fulfilled through us. Most of the time, we are focused only on what we think we should be achieving in life, not considering on consulting with the Holy Spirit God. If we understand we're men and women of destiny, and that God has a plan for our lives, and that these plans generally are far bigger than what you can achieve in your own strength, you will know how helpless you are without God. But thank God, with Him, I can do all things. Amen. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Don't throw your arms up in the air and say, I don't know what's going to happen. No. If God is in charge of our lives, even if it seems impossible, begin to pray and say, Lord, I'm available. Flow through me, my God. Let your will and your purpose be fulfilled through my life. Let your name be magnified. And I'm telling you, my friend, the more we can spend time in His presence praying in the Holy Spirit, not just from your lips, but from the depths of your heart. Because listen, deep calleth unto deep. Amen? So from the depths of your heart, we need to learn to call unto God. And He promised, when I call, He will answer. So if you're not finding answers, that means the call is not really from the depths of your heart. Because God is not about to lie. He never lied and He will never lie. So if you said it, He's about to do it. But we have to learn to connect with, his, with, with what is demanded of us and connect with the Spirit of God so He can flow and fulfill His promise. He is moved when the cry come from, comes from inside and not just a, a lip service kind of prayer. You know, Let the prayer rise from within. We need to learn to be a people of prayer. Father, speak to me. <clears throat> Let your wisdom prevail. Let God give me light that I can see that I can understand, that I can flow. We desperately need God. I'm telling you, the days are not getting better. They may even get worse. But in the midst of darkness, my light has come. He will never leave us in darkness. Wherever we are, His light will shine and He will guide us. So that we are not trapped like the rest of the world, but we'll always find a way where there is no way because His light has come. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Don't look at yourself as somebody like any or anybody that is in the world. You are special. He said, you're the apple of my eye. Praise God. He said, I've carved you on the palm of my hands. You are special. God loves you. God wants to care for you. And God wants to provide. But we have to learn how to approach Him. You know, you might have a lot of money in the bank sitting there. It is your money. But there is a protocol to be able to extract that. It is yours. The name, your name is on it. But you can't just walk into the bank and say, give me my money. They will not. They'll say, who are you? No, no, I have money. I can prove it. Yeah, you can prove it. But use the protocol to get it. So also, we have all the promises, but there's a protocol involved in coming into His presence and laying hold on what God has promised for us. It doesn't happen automatically. 
That's why we are here teaching every Sunday, every Friday as to how we can develop our relationship with God and understand the protocols involved so that we can possess and we can lay hold of and draw what God has already promised for us. Come on. And one of the most important ingredients in the protocol or one of the most important steps in the protocol is prayer. Do you know that Daniel was a man of great wisdom? Look, the demonic world, the Medes and the Persians, there were spirits. There were principalities. Remember something. I'm telling you something. Listen carefully. When Daniel prayed, God sent Gabriel. Gabriel was stopped by who? Who? It was not just a normal devil. It was the prince of Persia. There are principalities that control territories. Now watch this. Daniel was appointed leader over not only godly aspects, but even the magicians, the astrologers of the demonic world. So you can see how they recognized that Daniel, the, 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 the kind of connection that Daniel had in, with the supernatural realm was far greater than the connection that they had or the supernatural world that they could move in. Come on, amen? So there, is, so there are supernatural powers. Watch. Some things don't, you cannot bind and cast out. Because there is a hierarchy in heaven. In the heavenly realm. Both in the, in the spiritual, divine spiritual realm. And also the demonic spiritual realm. As powerful as God is. And as powerful as Jesus was. He did not cast your sin away. Can you cast your sin away? No. There was a price that had to be paid. There are things you can cast away, but there are things for which you have to pay a price. Don't trivialize. Don't say, well, I can just cast out any devil. Yes, you can. There is a, there, there is a realm at which, as you grow in the spiritual realm, you have authority that is, re, that is given unto you to operate at that level. Try opposing and try to try binding a devil that is above your capacity you're in trouble you're biting too much that you cannot chew you have that's why prayer is so because it is in prayer and with the understanding of the word you grow in your capacity and you grow in your authority When Gabriel was stopped, look at this. It was the prince of Persia who had authority over that land. That was a territorial spirit. For him to move aside, Gabriel, my, sorry, Michael had to come. Can you understand? When there was a battle going on over the body of Moses, to be buried. The Satan was there and Michael was there. And they were battling over the body, the dead body of Moses. And you know what Michael said? The Lord, what, what's the right word? The Lord punish you or the Lord uh, um, adjure you, rebuke you. Listen, why did Michael not say, I cast you out? He never said, I adjure you. He said, the Lord adjure you. You know why? Because Satan, when he was Lucifer, had the authority that was given to him by God. He was of the top ranking angels. Even after he fell, he's recognized as a power. 
In the story of Job, he appears before God. You with me? So you have to understand. Listen, my friend. There is so much in the word that we don't understand. And it is only as we pray that these understandings and revelations will come to us. And we begin to see, oh my God, I never heard this before. I never saw this before. When Jesus was casting out the demons from the person in Gadarene, you know what they said? Don't cast us out of this territory. There are spirits that are assigned to territories. So when we're praying, it's not praying, Lord, get more people saved. There are spirits that are controlling people from not getting saved, from not listening to the word, for being distracted, from being dis dissuaded and not coming close to God. So we, as we pray, God will open our eyes so we can battle against these things and bind those forces wherever we need to bind. And we move in the authority of God. Because, but you see, it's not just saying, Lord, give me more souls, give me my, more souls. Yes, that is the cry. But you have to understand then there is an operation that is involved in the spiritual realm that is to be dealt with. That's why we need to pray. A praying church is a thriving church. But most often we're turning a church into an entertainment center. Hardly much prayer happens. That's why we are more, we are more, people are attracted to the entertainment, but not the power. The power of God has to be exhibited. The power of God has to be manifested. The power of God has to set people free from all kinds of bondages, addictions, sickness, disease. That's the gospel. Getting people saved, getting them out of the bondage of the enemy and bring them into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that doesn't happen by, through entertainment. It happens through power. Power is accessed only through prayer. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. Praying. Who was with him? The devil. Who showed up after 40 days? Not the angel, not God. Come on. Let's get a little brighter. Understand we have a real enemy out there that does not want us to succeed in life. That does not want us to be a testimony for the glory of God. That wants to douse our fire for God and kill the appetite for prayer. To do that, he doesn't say, don't pray, don't pray. He gives you distractions. Oh, you can pray. Watch this first. You can pray, eat. You can pray, sleep first. So these are all legitimate excuses for not praying. You can justify, the re, the justify your action for not praying, but the result, the end result is what? You become weak. And that's his plan. Because when you're weak, it's easy for him to come against you and pull you down. So church, please listen to what I'm saying. We have a real enemy out there that plans to kill, steal, and destroy everything. So whether you like it or not, force your flesh to pray. We have to learn to pray. Stand up. Let's pray for five minutes. Come on. I don't want to just give a lecture. Let's do it. Come on. Open your mouths, everybody. Start praying. If you're a man who has been praying every day, you won't find it difficult. But if it's been a week since you prayed, then you'll find it boring and, and difficult. Come on. Open your mouths and pray loudly. And pray that God will touch you this morning. God will speak to you. And something will happen in your lives. Come on. The fire of the Holy Ghost will burn within you, causing a new desire to pray. Father, this church belongs to you. We are your people. Holy Spirit God, birth a new fire in us. Birth a new hunger in us birth a new desire Lord God to pray to seek you for your presence oh God to seek your presence oh Spirit of God come 
come fall afresh upon us let your power flow by God I pray not only for those that are here but those that are watching online those that have not been able to come those that will be coming in the second service those that are in other campuses Lord I pray wherever our members are wherever this family is God come fall afresh come on come on come on come on fall afresh upon us Lord desire desire hunger to pray pray 